Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the second webinar of the Outcome Harvesting Community. My name is Carmen Wilson Grau. I will be your moderator today. I am an independent consultant. I am based in Guatemala and I'm specialized in outcome harvesting. And I am also one of the outcome harvesting community facilitators together with Hula Schiers and Connie Hoyting. I will let Hula and Connie briefly introduce themselves. Connie? Um, hi. Um, okay, Hula, go ahead. Uh, I'm looking. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Hulis Geers. Um, I'm an independent consultant based in Belgium, but uh, working internationally. And um, I've been working with outcome harvesting since the very beginning, first within an organization and since uh, 10 years as a consultant. So hi everyone. Hello, my name is uh, Connie Hoytink. I'm actually uh, sitting here in a double role. I am indeed uh, one of the facilitators of the outcome harvesting community. I'm an outcome harvesting consultant, consulting since over uh, a year and a half. And um, for the past 10 years, actually, I've also been working with Wetlands International. And in that capacity, I'll participate in the presentation later. I've been working with Ricardo actually since, since early 2000, so more than, uh, more than 50 years. So have been influenced uh, by the thinking of Ricardo and um, the principles and values that eventually culminated in outcome harvesting for a very long time. Thank you. As I said before, this is our second webinar organized by the Outcome Harvesting Community. Uh, end of January, we had our first one. And if you missed the previous webinar, you can find recordings and presentations on our website. We plan to hold uh, regular, at least monthly webinars. Uh, for the first webinars, we have asked those who presented on outcome harvesting at the American Evaluation Association Conference last uh, November to present their cases. If you have an interesting outcome harvesting case and you would like to share it in a webinar, please write us uh, in our mail, who will be shared at the screen. We kindly uh, ask you to keep yourselves muted during the presentations and also to keep your camera off. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to write them in the chat and we will address them during the Q&A session at the end. This webinar is being recorded and we will be made it available to the outcome community members and also we will share it on our website. I want to mention that the webinar assumes that you already have a bit of understanding of what outcome harvesting is, and we will not go through the basics of the methods. It will be people sharing their experience in applying outcome harvesting within their projects or programs. For this webinar, we have 30 minutes of presentations followed by questions and answers. So I am pleased to welcome our two speakers of today. Afu Bengali, she works at Wetlands International in Mali. Ruchika Shiva, she works for the International Red Cross in India. And Connie Hoyting, who works at Wetlands International in the Netherlands. The three of them collaborate within the Watershed Program, which is one of the Dutch funded strategic partnerships of the Dialogue and Dissent Program. This partnership mainly works towards strengthening civil society's organizations' capacity to influence policies and practice within integrated water management. They have been using outcome harvesting for monitoring and adaptation of their theory of change in the program, and they will share us their experience with it today. So that said, I hand it over to Connie, who will start with the presentation. Connie, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Carmen. Um, just to say that uh, Ruchika is not working with uh, the Red Cross, but with IRC as such, and she'll be able to uh, explain uh, more to you about that. Uh, um, uh, watershed. Well, Watershed uh, is a program that started in 2016, and it's a partnership between four Dutch organizations, there are 18 partner organizations in six countries and some regional networks that work uh, across the globe. Um, it is funded by the Dutch government through the so-called Dialogue and Dissent program that supports and participates 25 of such strategic uh, partnerships. 
the dialogue and dissent uh, uh, program is specifically meant to strengthen civil society capacity to lobby and advocate. And it requires a theory of change while it encourages outcome harvesting as a methodology because that's particularly useful for complex programs such as this one, where it is difficult to really predefine results. At the start of uh, Watershed, an overarching theory of change was developed that you can see here. And we identified 25 so-called intended outcomes and uh, uh, three main strategies that you can see in the far left and 27 assumptions that each define the rationale for the, all the steps of the theory of change. The six countries in which uh, Watershed runs each uh, develop their own specific theory yeah, of change yeah. as well. Um, outcome harvesting, we only started in the second year after that all the theory of change were made with a pilot in two volunteering countries and it was supported by Ricardo as a consultant. We used the tool for what we usually refer to as monitoring, that is for the periodic and systematic collection of data regarding implementation uh, and regarding results, but actually also for, the for evaluation, internal evaluation, that is the interpretation of data for learning and for timely decision making to improve our performance and to be uh, accountable. So outcome harvesting became not only a tool to support reporting, but also a tool to learn and adapt our theory of change and to inform our annual planning. This meant that we had slightly uh, uh, adapted the six steps in the outcome harvesting uh, phases to customize it for monitoring and evaluation. Training of the harvesters and of the informants was necessary throughout the entire process. We started with a two-day uh, training at, uh, in all the countries and actually at each harvest, done once in some cases uh, twice a year, a small recap of the training is done. Uh, step three, the review of the outcomes, the so-called uh, ping pong process uh, that we do uh, to arrive at complete and good quality uh, outcomes, that was enriched, enriched with a peer review process that took place in the workshop setting. And that was really um, most valued by uh, all participants uh, to not only learn, uh, learn you know, the, the methodology of outcome harvesting, but also to learn more about the, the work and the, and the results of their colleagues' uh, work. So uh, then we also uh, moved the substantiation phase actually to the end. That means that actually at this moment, we are preparing for the, the substantiation to be done as part of the external evaluation. That means that so far we have not yet done substantiation while we have already gone through analysis, interpretation and use of the findings. Um, let me go to the next, yeah. Um, only after having harvested uh, outcomes for uh, almost a year, we started to develop meaningful categories to facilitate the analysis. Um, we developed categories that actually worked in all countries, regardless their specific theory of change, and that allowed for, of course, analysis across the several countries. We developed these categories in consultation with the, the persons from the two first piloting uh, countries that started with outcome harvesting. We have developed um, categories to uh, categorize, categorize each outcome according to the actual actor who changed. And we distinguish national governments, local governments, civil society organizations, and other actors such as, uh, such as individuals or a research institute or a private sector party. Then for the outcomes, we also looked to which of the key elements of our theory of change that change contributes. And for Watershed, we distinguish the use of reliable evidence, which is important for lobbying and uh, for, uh, governments to use, um, uh, to use evidence in their decision making, social inclusion of marginalized groups, coordination and collaboration, the integration of water sanitation with integrated resource management um, uh, and accountability and budget transparency. 
And then we also classified the, the contribution of watershed to the outcomes and we distinguish training and capacity development, lobby and advocacy, as well as knowledge management. Um, then um, uh, the outcomes that were thus classified could then be used for a sense-making process in which uh, we use the so-called experiential learning cycle that follows the simple sequence of after you implement a program, pose the questions, what do we observe? So what does that mean? And now what will we do differently? And actually these three steps also follow the phases or the steps in outcome harvesting of analysis, interpretation and uh, the use of the findings. Um, well, the first question to be asked is what do we observe? That is actually the analysis. In this phase, we first categorize the outcomes and then visualize them in different ways, and yet still withholding our judgment about that. Some examples of how we visualize the outcomes is uh, we simply counted the number of outcomes according to the elements of the theory of change. And what you see here is a, a compilation of all the outcomes for all the countries. And immediately you can see that uh, on social inclusion, we did not contribute with very many outcomes. So that was immediately an important note to take and that raises, uh, raises questions. Another way that uh, we visualize this is that we linked the harvested outcomes to the intended outcomes. And here you can see an example of the Uganda theory of change, where with the numbers we linked the harvested outcomes. And also you can see that here you identify gaps and it gives raise, a rise to certain questions about how we progress in the theory of change. Then this is yet another example from Bangladesh where we're trying to reveal patterns and processes of change where several outcomes and contributions leading to outcomes and smaller outcomes leading to bigger changes. Then the, um, uh, the, the phase of, so what does this mean? Now here we started to see judgments about the outcomes that we have contributed to. And we were posing questions like, when you see this, looking at the, at the, at the data, what makes you happy? What makes you worry? Are there surprises? Are there things that you miss? Do you really understand why this happens? And eventually we pose the question, what does this mean for achieving our objectives or not? And what does it mean for the effectiveness of strategies? And in this phase particularly, we realize that a good preparation, that is a good analysis, is really necessary to get the most out of this step. And it underscores the importance to distinguish the what do we observe from, so what does it mean? Um, and preferably even allowing some time in between those two steps of analysis and really interpretation. We also realized when we went through this for the first time, that uh, the question, do we really understand why this happened? Why the changes took place the way they took place? That was not really, uh, really answered in a lot of detail. And at this moment, we are seeking how we can use the assumptions from the theory of change and possibly simplify them in order to answer this question. Um, then finally, the step is, okay, now what we would try to do differently, that is adapt the theory of change and we made several changes in targeted actors and stakeholders and we prepared uh, the activities in the annual planning. You will see examples. Uh, lastly, uh, let me go to the last slide. As you know, outcome harvested is firmly rooted in a number of principles. And in this presentation, we focus mostly on the facilitation of usefulness throughout the harvest, the nurturing appropriate participation, and the fact that you learn outcome harvesting experientially. And uh, for me, for example, a few important learn learnings was that not all insights are eventually reflected in renewed and written theory of change, but it also a lot of learning happens in between. So it is slowly, slowly uh, helping to change people's mind in how they look about their program and the changes and slowly making this focus from output orientation towards outcome orientation. And also that already the simple observation of numbers of outcomes is what I showed already fosters important discussions. Well, that's it. I'll leave the rest to uh, my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Connie. We'll continue with
a fool, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, correct. A fool, if you could turn your camera on while you present so people can see you. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, Carmen, and thank you, Connie. Hi, everyone. I'm Afu Bengali. I work for Wetland International in the Mali office. And uh, I've been uh, running the watershed program as project manager in the country. So um, thank you for the invite. And uh, we've been asked to share a bit uh, about our experience as country in this watershed program uh, on outcome harvesting. So when we started this program in 2016, uh, it's only in 2017 we started now the outcome harvesting uh, process. And uh, we've been we have been very working very hard, but uh, it was very hard for us to see change happening. And when we started the process in 2017, uh, all part our partners, uh, implementing partners of the program in the country were feeling very good because uh, we started seeing uh, changes. And uh, this approach also has helped us uh, to do an uh, easy monitoring of change within our own organization. Next slide. Sorry. And then uh, uh, through this uh, process, uh, we have been uh, also able to catch uh, an un unexpected outcome within the, the program in the Mali. And uh, one of the concrete examples we wanted to share with you is that uh, one of our implementing partners, which is the National Coalition for Civil Society Organization in the country working on the water and sanitation sector, they have been able uh, to, uh, to add uh, two new uh, funding donors uh, among their uh, funding, uh, they are funding donors uh, within their organization. Then uh, uh, we've seen also four other uh, donors that are negotiating contract with them as well. And uh, they found that uh, since 2017, uh, their budget uh, has increased from 19,000 euros to 150,000 euros in 2019. And this was really an uh, unexpected outcome within the program, which was not really in our theory of change at the beginning. And uh, this demonstrates uh, a recognition by the donor of uh, the relevance of uh, this coalition activity on lobbying and advocacy, and even more in coordinating a strong water and sanitation network. It also carries the possibility of new partnership at local and global level. What Watershed has done to make this change happen within this, this, this uh, organization. Since uh, 2017, uh, we have been having uh, every year a contract uh, with uh, the, the National Coalition of uh, Civil Society Organization to implement uh, uh, the activities of the program across our intervention areas. And each of the activity uh, got uh, covered by the national TV. Then uh, also uh, the, the organization created uh, a network for civil society organization calling uh, Alliance Citoyenne pour l'eau et l'assainissement, which is a uh, um, network uh, uh, working uh, uh, to, to, to lobby on the right issues on water and sanitation sector across the country. Then uh, we participated also in uh, several uh, stakeholder consultation uh, in the sector, organized uh, training uh, on different topics. And uh, in uh, December 2018, uh, uh, we had got uh, nominated uh, as focal point for the sanitation and water uh, for all uh, initiative in the country. Next slide. Then this process also uh, help us uh, to plan uh, the following year, like uh, this year 2020, with a key outcome in line with the theory of change. One of the outcome we wanted to share with you as well is that uh, in 2019, the Minister of Environment and Sanitation and Sustainability of Mali decided to ban the dredging along the entire Niger River in Mali for one year following a ministerial decree. 
And um, this uh, change or this outcome uh, um, was really fitting our TOC, our theory of change, because uh, it demonstrates a progress uh, in one of the main topics we've been working and advocating for, which is the wash and water management linkages and uh, the water resource protection at the Niger River level, and also, which is uh, really a lifeline for the entire country. And uh, through this process, we've been also to plan uh, like uh, what will be the next activity regarding uh, following this uh, change. Then uh, we decided this year we are going to set up citizen wash committee that will collect data on the implementation of the decree in uh, our intervention area. Next slide. And this process also allow us uh, to realize a deviation from uh, our theory of change. Like uh, we had intended outcome in our country programs uh, and uh, with this process, we found we have been very over ambitious because uh, when we have a state outcome, we found that uh, we have not been really doing well in terms of uh, changes uh, at uh, some uh, uh, intervention areas uh, such as Mopti and Segu. Uh, to change uh, decision makers. We have not been doing well in terms of change as well uh, in, uh, on social inclusion issues uh, within the program. And uh, it has now helped us also to try to focus our activities uh, for this year 2020. And that's why uh, this year we are going to focus more on consolidating our outcome by further influencing the national governments because we have done a lot, we got many outcome at uh, that level, governmental level. Next slide. Then uh, I would like to end my presentation uh, by saying that uh, the outcome harvesting enabled to see our own contribution to the change and how significant that change can be but we did not capture what other actors are contributing to the change. And in order to create more synergy and work toward a bigger and more sustainable change, other actor contribution will be good to add to the outcome statement. So this can be pushed for further reflection in this webinar. Thank you. Great, thank you very much for very interesting. Ruchika, I want to ask you if you could also turn off your camera while you're presenting. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, um, I work with IRC and it's not the Red Cross, it's just known as IRC. It was earlier the reference center for water and sanitation for the, the WHO and now is independently registered as a Dutch foundation. I'll be sharing our experiences for using outcome harvesting from India for the watershed project. Uh, we are one of the partners, uh, we have ACFO and uh, Wetlands. Wetlands leads the project in India. And I'd be sharing just in terms of our experiences of using this methodology. If you could just press enter, Connie. Yeah. So we've been using uh, this methodology since 2018. We have over 50 outcomes. And this has been a regular process of reflection to capture changes through our interventions and indirectly uh, that have uh, been uh, through other interventions uh, of our partners and the consortium members. Uh, in India, uh, almost every six months, we are due to do one exercise in April now. So this almost is 50 outcomes for one and a half years. Uh, next. Um, it's important to note that uh, while we are a consortium that is based at the national level, a lot of our focus has been at the district below. Our state, uh, state partners work at the district level and below, and we do have technical partners and consortium partners, which are national partners, uh, national level NGOs. However, most of our focus has been at the district below because of the scale in India. This has been an interesting process because it has got everyone uh, that work at various levels and have various uh, different levels of capacities uh, together on the same platform and uh, look uh, reflecting back on the project. And um, 
I think uh, that has been a very good process of even capacity building where a project talks about sustainability and long-term uh, solutions. This uh, itself has helped partners move away from thinking of, uh, like we say, taps and toilets to short-term outputs to actually, so what was the change and what, what is a, a sustainable change through the process? So it's been a huge mindset uh, change in terms of cap monitoring uh, our efforts and capturing change. Next. Um, it has been useful other than the fact that it, it got all the partners that work in varied levels at the same platform, but also uh, it has been helpful for us to reflect based on each of the contributions that have we uh, been focusing on the right el elements of the program and if we have been doing that adequately so. There have been elements that we have actually uh, taken out because there were not much um, efforts that we thought uh, we had that could uh, change or influence those. At the same time, uh, there are uh, topics like social inclusion where we thought uh, certain bits of interventions would make a lot of difference. And we saw that played out differently for the two partners working in the two different states. Uh, while one had a lot of outcomes har uh, harvesting on uh, social inclusion, the other had fairly lesser. And we realized that was a function of context and the partner's capacity and made us reflect on how we want to uh, handhold the partner or uh, kind of course correct on that. Also, it helped us um, reflect on the kind of stakeholders that we can influence and the duty bearers. So kind of also helped us check on that. One other bit was in terms of collaborations. Uh, when I uh, reflect on the previous slide, our um, interventions were mostly focused like at the district and at the state level. However, a lot of the outcomes then uh, that were harvested were also at the national level. And national level collaborations, um, were uh, formed so that in a great uh, that was also very helpful for us while our focus was different it resulted in something larger than we expected and that is one of the un unintended outcomes of the process next slide yeah i'm taking the example of kesar mano she is uh, one of the board members in a community in samastipur district in bihar and uh, she had sought the list of beneficiaries for a government program. Uh, there was a subsidy of 12,000 rupees. And um, she had asked for uh, a list of people who were able to access this uh, subsidy. The significance was that she was one of the first uh, women to go and access this bit of information. And the fact that they were, uh, she was claiming her right to public information uh, was also key that somebody was claiming that information. And secondly, the fact that it was a woman, keeping in mind the context where they don't even have uh, much of space to speak or uh, participate in many of their own community level meetings. The orientation workshops and handholding by our field partners was one uh, the contribution that led to this uh, outcome. Another interesting fact about this outcome is that um, it was actually viewed differently uh, by our partners. It was almost seen as a negative outcome because the women, uh, the SAG members were questioning the local government's authority by asking uh, the, uh, the high level, the block uh, office, the government block office about the information on the list. Whereas uh, this is exactly what our program is about, about people uh, asking for information, knowing where to go and um, uh, we didn't actually see it uh, negatively. We saw it positively, but our partners actually saw it negatively. So it was an interesting fact. And then we discussed about uh, that and I can probably explain that later. Uh, next slide. Uh, being a large uh, advocacy program, uh, small in terms of uh, resources, but in keeping in mind scale in India, um, it's very important for us to capture the small changes in actors because not only has that in helped us influence uh, duty bearers at the higher level, but also it has been a motivating factor for us to go ahead with the project um, and keeping our partners motivated in put uh, by putting all these smaller um, changes together. Next. Yeah. 
in terms of lessons learned i think it's important for us uh, to keep uh, to keep reminding ourselves and orienting our partners when we work on outcome harvesting is uh, that we need to think away from outputs to outcomes typically whenever we look at monitoring we end up looking at activities outputs and yes so what could be the intended outcome or how can we make a output into an outcome and that's typical uh, line of thinking that comes but what has helped is that we've already started a, a six monthly process by not looking at our activities or outputs but in using a clean slate and saying what are the changes in our area with our stakeholders with our duty bearers or with our partners and that has helped in terms of capturing the outcomes uh, which would not be possible if we go the activity output and outcome way uh, the next point next slide yeah. uh capturing negative uh, outcomes has been a bit of a challenge it requires a harvester to constantly reinforce that it's a learning and not a negative assessment of the performance of the partners i think this is very key and the example i shared actually came out from this exercise of talking through the uh, with the partner about the possible negative changes and and the example of the women approaching the senior official was seen as a negative change uh, yeah so it's interesting uh, uh, discussions that happen when we look at that next yeah um we found it a bit uh, challenging sometimes to put all the change in one sentence about capturing what happened from point a to point b point b with whom where and who but uh, looking back um, it kind of helps us plot the change and um, the journey of the project much more easily by having it so it it does require a lot of practice yeah next um i'd like to end with this uh our, our stakeholders for the project are also government officials and the fact that they get transferred regularly this may pose to be a obstacle when you're looking at uh, substantiation later in the project and i uh, close with that thanks great thank you very much ruchika a full and cunning for the presentation very valuable to learn more about each of your experiences if in your country supplying outcome harvesting so we will continue with uh, the questions as i mentioned at the beginning you're welcome to write uh, your questions in the chat box but you can also raise your hand in order for me to unmute you <clears throat> so you can ask your question uh, please be sure to be unmuted if you're not talking, so there is no uh, background noise. Um, we have a first question from Sila Sar. She says, a very interesting presentation. Uh, it was mentioned more than outcomes were harvested. Her question is, how were they collected across all the six countries? Connie, would you like to respond? That one? Yeah, okay, I can uh, give it a try. Um, indeed, it's by now, after what is it, two and a half years, that we have uh, reached 350 outcomes or so. What we do at least once in a year, and in some countries mm -hmm. twice a year, we conduct workshops in which, and actually prior to the workshops, we ask the partners and the workshops bring together from each organization. And we have like the, the Dutch based organizations like wetland Simavi, uh, IRC and ACFO, they have one or two staff members in the country and then we have the local partners that or the national partners that have one or two members. So we bring together a group of between 10 and 15, 10 and 20 people who each for their own organization think back about how, what the outcomes are that they contributed to. And uh, so we have uh, the, the usual uh, format that we work with on who changed what, when and where, uh, what did we do to contribute to that change and why is this significant. Um, we ask all the partners to, uh, to identify and formulate outcomes from their point of view. And they, uh, they 
probably they must uh, go back to uh, to people in communities or people that they work together with or from other organizations to really think and brainstorm and ask more detailed information about what 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 is the change that we contributed to so that's really happening by each organization in each country and that slowly builds up to the 300 plus and then oh, I could, of course, explain more about uh, the, the, well, I already mentioned the ping pong process that initially you identify like outcome ideas or rough statements or, of outcomes and then thinking through the detailed process of what outcome harvesting is and def what a definition of what an outcome is, you often come to a change or actually who is the most important actor that changed here and this is really more a contribution from us or from an, uh, an other actor but where we, did we make our influence so that is the brainstorming part eventually resulting in uh, but it's a very participatory process and it's key that the people who implement the program that they are the first ones to identify the, the outcomes let me know if you have more questions. Thank you. Ruchika and uh, Napu, would you like to add something about your harvesting process of the outcomes? Um, yeah, okay. Apu, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, uh, like uh, Connie has uh, said, uh, and uh, in the process uh, we had um, the collection uh, once in a year, like we do it in the month of March. In, uh, in the month, uh, every year we have it in the month of March. So what we usually do, we have all the implementing partners, like for the Mali case, uh, we have uh, APO and Wetland International and uh, IRC, uh, that are the, the consortium members in the Mali work package. Then we have three, national uh, CSOs that are implementers on the ground. So we usually have a one day workshop because uh, we receive a capacity building on the whole process of how to identify the outcomes, uh, how to do the description of this, uh, the, the, the contribution, the significance of each of the, the outcome and their importance. So we have received training from Kony on that process. So after that training, now we ourselves, we identify every, uh, every month of January or of February, we identify now the different outcomes, then uh, sent to Kony and now we start now the discussion before having the workshop with her uh, in the in country. So that is how we've been, uh, we've been doing the whole process. So it usually takes one day workshop with all the partners where uh, we come together and we fill the template, then uh, discuss among ourselves, okay, this one, is it really a change? Uh, how do we contribute to this? Uh, so we had this discussion among ourselves as partners before. So the process is very participatory. Great, thank you. Ruchika, would you? Uh, quite similar. Uh, we've also used other opportunities of other uh, participatory exercises and added a day and done the outcome harvesting. In between, um, as uh, workshops are not always possible with partners, we have had a uh, uh, colleague, uh, Kalpana from Wetlands, has been doing Skype uh, uh, process, uh, processes on Skype to gather the uh, outcomes on a at a shorter term and then we take them up later in a workshop in terms of are they actually outcomes or outputs and then looking at contributions and this thing so the listing bit is something that we initiate sometimes over um, skype because the because of the distances but when we come together we make use of that time in terms of uh, looking at these great thank you our next question, do you have examples of unexpected outcomes that influence your strategies? I think this can be answered by all three of you. Um, I have to think about that actually. Uh, yeah. There were... Um, yeah, Afu, what about the... Already in Afu's presentation, you mentioned that the uh, that the 
uh, absence of certain outcomes realize you, that made you to realize from, hey, we've been a bit over ambitious and we have to adapt our theory of change, but there was more the, the absence of, uh, of outcomes. And in terms of unintended outcomes, um, Ruth, I'm not so sure, but in principle, well, there, there must be some examples. I'd thing. like to share. Yeah. Uh, we clearly, like I mentioned, that uh, we clearly were focusing at the state level down in the two states and had intended just to be sharing at the national level, whereas we did, uh, we did, uh, we did get a lot of requests at the state, uh, at the national level, even in terms of uh, inputting into certain national level guidelines based on our work. So yeah, those were unintended uh, outcomes. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Afu. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I would like to share uh, one of uh, one of the outcome that has really influenced our strategy. Because uh, in the Mali context, uh, we've been uh, working uh, to address uh, um, institutional framework of the water and sanitation in the country, but uh, mainly focusing uh, on the water preservation. That has been really that has been really our um, our main uh, focus uh, advocacy focus in the country. But but uh, to do that one, we we needed to have a very strong uh, CSOs, and that's why we worked uh, closely since uh, 2016 up to date with the National Coalition of Civil Society in the uh, in the country working on the water and um, sanitation sector. And uh, one of the outcome, uh, unexpected outcome we got is that uh, through the years we have this program has uh, given many capacity building to these uh, coalition members. And we found that uh, the, the number, the membership of the coalition has increased. They got new members are coming in the, in the, in the, the coalition. Then also they had uh, this credibility uh, because of the visibility they, they have been put for, uh, putting forward across the, the major. Then uh, um, they have been chosen or nominated as the focal point of the water and sanitation uh, uh, for all initiative in the country. So the focal point for the CSOs is a part of this coalition. And we believe that is through our capacity building exercise that we have given to them, they have been really been uh, credible and uh, to do the, this work. And currently, they are the ones sitting uh, in the different committees uh, as civil society organization uh, on the revision of different uh, policies uh, in the country, like the, what, the national water policy, the national uh, sanitation policy. And they are sitting in those committees uh, representing the civil society organization. And we believe uh, this program has contributed uh, to do that one. And that's why uh, uh, it has really influenced our strategy because uh, one of the, the objective or one of the change we wanted to see is also to have uh, the CSOs very well strengthened to be able to influence policies uh, and even programs and strategies uh, in the water and sanitation sector across the country. And today they are doing this work uh, and uh, it is really in, uh, in uh, it has influenced our strategy somehow. Yeah, this is what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you very much, Afu. Parta would like to know um, if we could adjust the outcome harvesting to adding a score from one to five on the outcomes, which reflects, reflects progress in line with theory of change to understand what extent the harvested outcomes achieved. So she's asking if we could make it a little bit more quantitative, the methodology. Connie, would you like to start responding? Sorry, I thought I was muted. The thing that comes to mind reading this is um, uh, rating the significance, and that is indeed uh, something that can uh, can help to really get a sharper insight into you know, how satisfied or how do we assess the progress that we are making. And that can well be done, 
had to assess the significance or rate rate the outcomes in terms of uh, yeah how what you are think is most important or what you are most uh, excited about. However, you have to take into account and allow space for differences in opinions. It will be quite natural that people value different things differently. So it's not that again, this is not rocket science, but it can be very valuable to actually get those different opinions on the table. Similar to the example that uh, Ruchika mentioned, that, that, that woman speaking out or asking for information from her uh, local government, which was regarded as negative by some of the partners, really reveals something, uh, a different perspective or uh, different attitudes towards change from within and among the implementing partners. And that's really good to, to get that on the table. What you see more often uh, uh, and, or more, more general is that there is different uh, differences in opinions or in value between uh, people working at different levels. People working at a global level may be interested in different type of outcomes than people working at, uh, at national or, or district or local level, for example. So that's it's just to, to note when yes, it can be very useful to rate the significance, but it always has to be combined with a justification why you think it's the most important and allow space for differences in opinion and value those differences and not too quickly move to the right answer about the value. Okay, great. Is that helpful? Uh, let me know. Yeah. Is this also a discussion you have had during the workshops in the countries with the teams? Sorry, whether we have had these work, these discussions? Yeah, about grading it. Did, has it ever come up during the workshop? Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I have been using uh, rating and indeed having then discussions about it, but I don't think that was Mali and India. There was another experience. Was it? I don't think so. We did it in Mali and India, did we? In no. Mali, by the way, Afu, we did. Now nah, we did. Remember, because we were. Um, but that was for the wetlands element only. We have in uh, Wetlands International in Mali, we have different programs that use outcome harvesting. And we were uh, using the outcomes from those different programs. And because that was too bulky for the purpose, we, uh, we identified the most important or most significant outcome, realizing that that is from the Wetlands International point of view. And that was actually, if I correct me if I'm wrong, Afu, that was actually fairly easily done in that case. Yeah, it's true. We did we did um, we did uh, the scoring of uh, our outcome, but has wetland not uh, within the watershed program. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I've been doing it in in others, and just as I as I said, value the discussion and allow allow to allow time for that, and be curious about each other's opinions and differences of insights, and maybe different interests uh, also among partners even. Yes. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Connie. Uh, Ruchik, I have a question for you from Awar. Um, he says, thanks for your presentation. In your last point, you talk of the challenge of turnover of government officials with regards to the substantiation stage. How did you address this challenge? And again, were these transferred government officials part of the implementing team or just persons who were knowledgeable about the program? So I can answer that question in part and I'm, Connie, you, if you could help in the remaining bit of it. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, these were officials who we were trying to influence um, as part of uh, the planning and budgeting and uh, looking at larger water resources and the need to, for uh, investing more towards uh, local governments for them to plan because certain subjects are part of the panchayats, the local self-governments for them to actually plan and implement. So there's certain bottlenecks around that and that is something that we were trying to work with the block level officials. And those are people who were transferred. So they were relevant stakeholders for us, uh, for us to influence and uh, bring about change. Um, there were certain bits of agreement that happened with them. However, they have been transferred and hence my question was, how do we substantiate any kind of progress on that end? And um, Connie, over to you about that, yeah. Uh, well, ju just to add in the first place that Watershed is a program that is implemented by uh, non-governmental uh, agencies, civil society organizations. 
So the government officials are not part of the implementing team. We collaborate and we work together with uh, with government officers, and at the same time try to influence them to change uh, to change behavior. Uh, so that's part of the of the answer. And that indeed, how to go about the challenge of of turnover? Well, there's uh, that's something that we are facing right now. Eh? As we say, well, I would hope that some people will still be um, traceable and available for online or um, or email uh, interviews or uh, or requests. If they, are, uh, if they have had a, a really significant uh, role or knowledge eh, for a substantiation, we, leave, uh, we, we seek independent uh, authoritative people who really know what happened and can, uh, uh, can, can be authoritative and, and willing to give their opinion on record. So I would hope that they are, um, are traceable. We could still uh, identify them. And uh, this may also be a call to do uh, substantiation a bit more frequently. That's another question, which I would not want to answer too quickly, to be honest, because doing a uh, proper substantiation is, if you do it well, it is a, a resource intensive, a time intensive uh, exercise. Uh, and I don't know, Carmen, whether you want me to move to the question about the substantiation that I saw. Yes, exactly. I was going to <laughs> follow yeah. up on that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We had a question to you, Connie, about the substantiation phase, which you mentioned that was skipped and kept for the final evaluation. Yeah. Could you yeah, share yeah. with us your plan to tackle it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's also important to note that we felt that already without this external uh, uh, independent view of substantiators on the outcomes. We felt that we could already use the outcomes. Huh? The people implementing the program, like the, con the country teams, uh, they had already gone through a thorough process of uh, formulating the outcomes to the extent that they are good, qu good quality and verifiable. That means that in most cases they have already, the implementing partners who formulated the outcomes, they have already involved external actors. Please check what it, when exactly did it happen and what exactly was the change and who was involved. So that process has happened. So for our internal use, um, we felt confident enough to use the information to continue uh, to continue and, and you with our analysis and, and annual planning. Now for the final external evaluation, of course, that's a slightly different um, different process because that also has a not only, but it also has a stronger focus on uh, external account, uh, accountability. So there, we now value the voice of independent, again, yet independent, uh, knowledgeable actors to verify and comment on the credibility of these uh, of the of these outcomes. Um, we have now made it part of the terms of reference for the external evaluation. We have not yet started uh, the, evaluator, the evaluation and it will be part of that evaluation to develop a more detailed process and answer questions like are we going to do, how many of the outcomes are we going to uh, substantiate, how are the evaluators going to select the outcomes that we will substantiate, will we substantiate through uh, through an, an online or an email questionnaire, or will we engage um, uh, in one-on-one -on -one interviews or maybe group interviews? Those are uh, those are uh, options that, uh, for the moment, are still open. So I cannot fully answer your question yet. But we uh, we deliberately give the external evaluation evaluators that are yet to be hired uh, an, an important role in that. Okay. Great. So we'll uh, anxious to know more about it. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Uh, I have a final question for Apu. Um, you mentioned you didn't capture contribution of other actors. How would you uh, capture this contribution? Who has knowledge on that? Can you? Sorry, you were asking who? For Afu. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, because he mentioned this specifically in our presentation. Okay. Um... Thank you, Carmen. Uh, what uh, I meant uh, to say uh, in, uh, with this uh, statement uh, is that um, with this process, uh, uh, every person uh, who has contributed uh, within the program to the change of the outcome, uh, we've seen the, our own contribution, what we've been doing to achieve that one. But um, we know that it's not only the, our own 
contribution only to make uh, some of the big uh, change that come. And uh, uh, for us, it will be really be good that uh, we have uh, um, other actors who have contributed to know what are, what are, what have been their contribution to this change, because uh, this will help us also in terms of planning for follow up of this outcome. And uh, this will help us also to, to, to see or, or to, to look for a bigger change. Like uh, I will give an example uh, uh, of outcome in our programs. The one I've mentioned that uh, the Minister of uh, Environment and Sanitation uh, found the, the dredging along the river Niger. This uh, outcome, uh, there are many actors that has been contributing uh, to make this change happen. And uh, Watershed as well has program and its partners contributed a lot to achieve this outcome as well. We know some of them, but some others, we don't know them. And uh, we don't know what have been their contribution as well. It would have been good if we knew their contribution, like uh, what we are planning this year to set uh, committees, uh, uh, citizen watchdog committees uh, that will be really uh, monitoring uh, this decree across the River Niger to see really, okay, this is official law decree that was taken. Is it being implemented properly? And these committees will be working on that and collecting information and giving us those data, which will help us also to, 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 to keep doing our lobbying and advocacy work. But maybe there are some other uh, contributors or some other actors who have also some activities going uh, uh, to, to keep monitoring this, this change but we don't know them. Is it uh, the, is the process can allow that in? If it will allow, the, it will give us really a bigger picture of the change and a great monitoring of the change that is happening. So that's what I really meant to, 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 to push for further reflection. If it is really possible to do it in the process, that will be really uh, great, yeah. Okay, thank you, Afu. Our time is uh, almost up, so I want to thank our presenters, Afu Bengali, Ruchika, Shiva, and Connie Hoiting for sharing your experiences in Mali and India on how to use uh, your harvested outcomes in adapting the theory of change and make more meaningful use of them. Thank you everyone for participating in your engagement with your questions. We will send around the link of the recording uh, and the presentations, which can also be found on our website. Uh, I would like to invite you to our next webinar to be held in April. Hule will briefly tell us a little bit more about it. Yes, so our next webinar will take place on April 2nd at the same time as this one, so you can already block this in your calendar. It will be presented by Helene Bach and Thea Meineche from Action Aid Denmark and myself, and we will explain to you how we used Podio um, as a software um, for a database and app for outcome harvesting. So we've actually created an outcome harvesting app in Podio, um, which you can use and adapt to your own context. Um, Podio is a very easy to use tool, so you don't need an IT person to set it up and it allows you to have an interactive process with your partners. We are very excited about it and we hope you will be as well. So I'm um, looking forward to see you next time. Thank you, Hula. We will publish on our website and we will send around the invitation within the, within the outcome harvesting community in the following weeks with more information about the date and time uh, of this webinar. For now, I want to thanks, thank again all of our presenters. Thank you, Hula and Connie for assisting in organizing this. And thank you everyone for your participation. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.